All right, hi guys. Today I want to talk about what I'm going to call first principles. So this is important to me because there's so many conflicting opinions. You know, I go into loads of different gyms all over the place and I meet students that have the same frustration, which is, oh man, I can't believe you're telling me I need to do things this way and what I've been doing was wrong. I've been doing this for three years and now, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's not surprising because a lot of gyms have a huge turnover of coaches. Um, for whatever reason and you know every coach that comes in has their own idea or their own opinion um, and it gets really confusing so I don't blame people but we got to remember that you know sanctioned opinion and fundamental reality are two completely different things and if you peel all the layers away from what everybody says there must be an underpinning universal reality which is always always true okay and that's going to be our first principles. So in terms of talking about barbell training, there is one principle which is always going to apply. And that is that the force of gravity is acting upon the barbell. Okay? So you must get yourself into a position that facilitates what gravity is going to be doing. Most likely when you're deadlifting and you're squatting and other movements like that, you're going to be moving weight which is in excess of your body weight. So it's going to be ruling what you're going to have to do. All right, so let's talk about this. Basically, gravity is going to do one thing and one thing only. This. An unimpeded object will fall at a line perpendicular to the Earth in all cases. Gravity never does this, and it never, ever does anything like that. Always goes down in a straight line. So in order for you to be the most effective against that force, you need to do the opposite thing. These are all Newton's laws equal and opposite reaction. So to be most efficient, you need to do that. Push up as gravity is pushing down in all cases. Okay, so that leads us on to, if that's the case, what technique criteria can we look for that would satisfy us knowing that this is happening? Okay, and the first thing is going to be that if gravity coming down in a straight line, bar must go up in a straight line. Okay, so technique criteria, Number one is going to be vertical bar path. Okay? Secondly, when you're pushing against anything, you want to make sure that you're in a position of balance and that that load is directly over the center of your base of support. So if this was the foot, then your base of support of where you're going to be most balanced is going to be the distance furthest from the rear and furthest from the front, which is always midfoot. So that's it. Easy criteria to know whether we're being effective or not against the force of gravity. The bar path is vertical and the weight is maintained over the middle of my foot. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is how to narrow down exercises which will enable us to do this the best. Okay, so let's say we take a squat for example. Is it possible in the front squat to maintain a vertical bar path and keep the weight over the midfoot? Yes. Uh, it depends on other factors like dorsiflexion and the mobility through the thoracic spine, but in a high bar squat and the front squat, you could maintain vertical bar path weight over midfoot. You could also do the same in a low bar squat and you could do the same in an overhead squat. So if you're gonna decide what you're gonna be doing in the gym, you need to have more technique criteria and that is going to be our exercise selection criteria okay so why do we come to the gym why do we move weights the only reason is because we want to get stronger if you want to get stronger it means you have to every single week lift more weight than the previous week so therefore it follows logically that if we want to get stronger we must move more weight Okay. Next thing is, if I went in the gym and there was only a couple of pieces of equipment available, one was a barbell and one was a leg extension machine, which one would make my leg stronger? The answer is going to be the barbell. And the reason is because the barbell squat uses a lot more musculature than the leg extension, which is isolated. So therefore, we're going to have to use more muscles. Okay? Um, and then the next thing is, we have this thing which is quite prevalent in CrossFit. People talk about intensity, but on level one course they talk about mechanics, okay? So it's gonna be 
M C I. So the very first thing you've got to do is your mechanics must be correct. So the next criteria is going to be effective range of motion. We're always looking to have great range of motion on a movement like a squat because we know that the further we travel the uh, weight, the greater our power output, okay? Force times distance divided by time. However, if you collapse under the thing, then that's not good either, okay? Because your mechanics were compromised. So it's got to be the best effective range of motion or the range of motion you can take yourself through whilst maintaining great mechanics consistently, then we can start increasing the load. Okay, so mechanics, more muscles and more weight. All right, and that leads me to recommend usually in class situations that most students are going to be doing low bar squat. The reason being that the hip is a class one lever, okay? Pivot point here, this is the hip. Load goes here, this is heavier than if the load is here. In other words, if the load is up here on your back in the squat, rather than down here, which is the spine of the scapula, then the load is gonna be heavier, higher up your back, than it will be lower down your back. That's physics, is how a lever works, okay? Once you adjust to the technical ability of the, uh, or technical demands of the low bar squat, you'll always be able to move more weight because it's physics, it's science, right? And that's why I come back to first principles. Someone might say they can high bar squat more than the low bar squat. That's probably because they don't practice the low bar squat. They haven't, you know, respected first principles. First principle being science. All right, so I'll do another video later on about how to set yourself up for a low bar squat, what the key points of performance are, uh, and then maybe another one later on errors and how to fix them, okay? Um, but basically, you always wanna be looking at this stuff when you're thinking about what you're doing in the gym. This stuff applies to the deadlift, it applies to the press, everything where you're moving a barbell. Gravity is taking action against the barbell, therefore, you must respect a vertical bar path and have the weight in the middle of your foot. All right, happy lifting, guys.